Hey, people of the internet, this is Julie Dose. Published by Renegade Kid, this game, Mutant Mods, was one of the most anticipated titles on the 3DS eShop. It's available for $8.99 and it features 12 bit graphics and just a retro style of gameplay. And now I'm gonna tell you guys whether or not this game was worth all the hype or not I had a few months ago. As always, I'll talk about the gameplay and premise of this game first. So, when it starts up, you see a meteor falling to the ground, and I don't know, for whatever reason, there's a bunch of little mud monsters that you're gonna have to find. And the main object of this game is to find water sprites at the end of every level, a la the flag at the end of every level in Super Mario Bros. And in each level, you're going to find coins like these, and you can jump and you can use your jetpack and you can shoot at enemies which I will once I find one and this is pretty much classic retro platforming I'm not really sure why we're doing all this but it's a video game it doesn't matter and that's the basic premise of the game this game mainly consists of platforming and trying to collect all the water sprites there are 20 total, plus an extra 20 hidden in every level, and you only have three hearts at the top, that you can, as you can see, and that makes this game very challenging because you can't get them back. And that's really all I have to say for now about the gameplay, and it also features some neat hooks like being able to jump into the background and into the foreground, as you'll see right now. And this game feels so polished. Um, it's really silky smooth and everything, and this game, this gameplay, I really have no problems with, and it's really fun and addicting, much as the original Super Mario Bros. was back when it came out, and so, for the gameplay, I'm going to give this game an A. One more thing I thought I'd mention is that the, the, um, little coin-like things, like they have in Super Mario Bros., I'm not really sure what they're called, but as you get them, you can see that there were some right there, but I collected them over here. As you get them, you collect, um, well, you collect them, and you can use them, and you can get various power-ups. There are three in total, but I won't tell you what they do or anything, because I don't want to spoil it for you. This game is a pretty big anticlimactic story at the end, so I don't want to ruin that for you guys. Graphically, this game is pretty impressive if you compare it to the standards of the NES and the SNES. All the character models, are, or sprites rather, have very detailed animations and they're just very detailed. And I just died because I can't really tell what I'm doing. But, you know, this game's graphics are really good for, you know, what it is. and. For graphics, I'm going to give this game an A- for great sprites. And also the 3D effect is great. It really helps bring out the gimmick of jumping into the background and foreground, and it helps it feel like less of a gimmick. Presentation-wise, the really thing I can only tell you about is the world map, which you can see here. It's divided into five worlds with four levels each, and you just go to whichever one you want, and you walk into the door. And the presentation was done fairly well. It really does a good job um, having the entire world map in one place and I just like it a lot. Um, it was done pretty well presentation wise and also since we're talking about the presentation I guess I'll go ahead and tell you guys about all the details in this game again. I mean just look at this. This is done with 12-bit graphics and I just died. And the sound in this game is also pretty good. It features some, um, you know, um, music that really captures the feel that the NES games used to have, and this is really good since this game is, you know, trying to be retro, and so for presentation and sound, this game is really good, and I'll give it a B, just because the presentation isn't stellar or anything. Like any old NES game, well not any old NES game, obviously there are games that are an exception to this, such as... Fester's Quest, uh, but this game has really fluid controls. You can use the D-pad or circle pad to move left or right. You jump with B, and you press B again to use your hover pack, and you can also use A, and you use Y to shoot, and you can also use X, and the controls are really fluid, really what you would want in a game like this, where platforming 
is key and the controls need to be as tight as possible. So for the controls in this game, I'm going to give it a... I just died. I can't see those tiny little things, but for controls in this game, I'm going to give this game a... A, because they're really fluid, really tight, and it's what you want in an old platformer like this. Now I'll be talking about fun and value. This game is a lot of fun to play, really bringing you back to the old NES games, as I've said multiple times. And value-wise, this game has 20 levels with a shine spread at the end of each one, copying Super Mario Sunshine there. And there's also 20 hidden ones, which you can find by using the power-ups that you find later on in the game. And all of those levels, which you'll find a hidden door for at the, well, just somewhere in that level, they um, pay homage to the Virtual Boy and the Game Boy, which I'll try to show you right now. See, here's V-Land, and it's, everything's going to be all red, just like the Virtual Boy era, which sucked, unfortunately. And so... Overall, this game is a lot of fun to play, and there's a lot of gameplay also, since you have your 20 normal shine sprites, your 20 hidden shine sprites, and as I mentioned previously, your little 100 coins in every level that you can use to upgrade your weapons and stuff. So, overall, this game has a lot of fun and value for its price of 9 bucks, and so, overall, for the fun and value, I give this game a A-. minus. Difficulty wise, this game is pretty hard. It, you're really gonna have to have precise platforming, and so, and this is one of the latest levels in the game, and it's really difficult. And so, the difficulty is pretty high in this game, and for that reason, I'm going to give it a recommended age range of ages 10 and up, because although it could appeal to any age range, it's pretty freaking hard. So, the recommended age range is ages 10 and up. Mutant Mods is my favorite game available on the eShop, and it's a great throwback to the old retro games. And so, for all its great gameplay, its tight controls, and sound, and level design, I'm going to give this game an A, which is the highest ranking I've given for a game on the eShop so far. And this game well deserves it, it is pretty much the best a retro game could ever be, and if this game was actually released back when the NES was around, then this would have been the best game ever, I'm sure. And so, this game is well deserving of its score of an A, and you should definitely pick it up if you have a 3DS. That was my review, tell me what you thought of it, people on the internet, I'll see you guys later.